seen you, but I'm calling you all the time, calling you all the time. Caught in the turning, losing the line. But I've learned to believe you when you say it'll be just fine. You say it'll be just fine. I've got so much to update you on. The first one being that I've literally just got back from the dentist because I've had Invisalign fitted on my top teeth. And it has to be the thing that I say to you first because I definitely have a bit of a lisp. And so I need to address why. Um, but yeah, my front two teeth have been moving and they've been really painful. Um, so I went to the dentist and he recommended Invisalign to kind of pull them back a bit. Just, I only need to wear this for three months and then, um, to put like one of those bars in the back to stop it from getting worse because he's like as you get older they're just gonna move more and more and then eventually you're gonna need treatment for longer but yeah they they feel super obvious but i think it's literally because i just got back it's the attachment bits that are kind of obvious do you know what it looks like it looks like what it is that's exactly what it looks like someone's look, gonna look at me and go oh she's got a little line on her teeth and think no more of it but i'm just sort of telling myself that because i feel very aware of it right now is it super obvious? I've got quite the big teeth. Maybe just like vlog with my arm as far out as possible at all times. Um, yeah, do you know the thing that I'm worried about most with them is like if I go to the pub and go like out for a bit of a drink, you meant to have them on for 22 hours a day and you can only drink water with them on. But can you actually drink a pint with them on? Like can someone who's had them tell me honestly? Because if I go to the pub say, and you're there for like four hours or whatever. Do you, do you take them off every time you drink your pint? But you know, like if you go to the pub for a while, you constantly drink, basically. Like you drink really slowly, but you always have a drink in front of you. So do you just have them off for four hours? Because you're not meant to do that. Or do you just all secretly actually just drink a pint with your Invisalign on and don't tell your dentist, even though your dentist is going to know? It feels so weird. Can you all comment and tell me it's not that obvious, even though that bit really, really is, isn't it? Oh, get over it, get over it. Anyway, while I was away, I renovated the kitchen and the bedroom. The final touch in the kitchen is gonna to be to replace these lights. But other than that, we are done. Let me show you. So I was very, very fortunate that this was here when I moved in and I love this so much. It's beautiful. Um, unfortunately, it does stain. Oh, it doesn't stain. It's like the concrete hasn't been treated quite right, basically, I think. So it, um, becomes too porous and absorbs stuff. But it's an incredibly beautiful piece that I would never get rid of. And then as you may remember, this was all coral with a black, it was actually like treated, um, it was almost like treated MDF, it was really weird, thing on the um, worktop. And I just, you know, it's coral, it's not really my cup of tea, whatever. So I have been wanting to change it for a while and worked with, a woman called Anna who has a company called High End Kitchen. I've paid for this all myself, so this is a very, very, very non-sponsored recommendation. And she was absolutely brilliant. They're amazing. I can't recommend them enough. If you're in London and need a kitchen doing, she did all of this in about five days. It was ridiculously quick. Um, so yeah, I've gone with wood to match this as close as possible. Um, fronts with these nice little cup handles. And then the piece of resistance was this piece of marble. Um, I ended up going with something quite, um, with quite a lot of pattern in it because it's such a beautiful big light room. It can really take that amount of pattern. Um, and I, I love it so, so, so much. I'm so happy with it. And then, yeah, we did the splashback out of the same bit. This was all tiled before. Um, and really oddly, like they only tiled up to here. And so it always just kind of looked a bit unfinished. So these are actually the wood, the wood from the wardrobe upstairs the one that I was always um, gonna get rid of. I thought, well, there's no point just not having it. It's a really expensive and beautiful piece of furniture. So we've broken it down and I'm gonna reuse all the wood um, for different things around the house. So that's what those shelves are made of. And then as you can see, I've just been filling the shelves and dressing the shelves and really, really enjoying it. But on it, it makes the biggest difference. 
I got that Le Creuset pan as a little treat. And I mean, I love it so much. It adds so much warmth into the room and oddly makes the ceiling look so much higher. These I kept because they're really, really nice. And they're really beautiful. And everything just like complements everything else so nicely now. So yeah, the last thing is the lights above here. I'm really super indecisive over what I want. So I'm not making, I'm trying to make a decision. I'm hoping I'll just know it when I see it. Um, because yeah, I was tempted by some of the Gucci lights, but not entirely sure that that is kind of gonna feel right in a kitchen space. Um, but this is the kitchen. I'm so pleased with that. I'll show you the bedroom next. Right, let's go look at the bedroom. So it's not much different. I also use the same um, woman, who, lady who did the kitchen. She did the bedroom as well and made this bed. I'm just going to take off the pyjamas that are on the bed so that it looks like they're not there and I'm not the kind of person that keeps pyjamas on a bed. We would put everything away all the time, as we know. Right, you ready? Okay, so I've had basically Obviously before I had a low bed in the middle of the room, very similar. But these alcoves were really like unused storage space. So, oh my gosh, storage space is hard to say. So we built in these bedside tables essentially. So there's two drawers there. There's still the drawers under the bed as well. Um, and yeah, it just looks so beautiful. I got this light from a local vintage shop the other day, which I love. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to find a really nice big piece of artwork for above the bed, but I'm being indecisive. And then the wardrobe is gone. So you just have the beautiful vintage mirror that has lived with me in three different homes now. Um, that is in here. Lots of plants. I brought my alto stool upstairs. Um, really realizing how many words have the letter S in it at the moment. Um, and I mean, I'm so happy with it. It just is, it looks really, really chic. It definitely needs some artwork to add some color back into the space. But um, yeah, I think it looks really, really great. I'm so pleased with it. So much space. But not having that wardrobe in here has made the biggest, biggest difference. And I've been sleeping really well because it feels incredibly calm and soporific in here. Am I just deliberately picking S words at the moment? Whew. Hello guys, we have a great outfit showing set up here. I'm going for dinner with my friend Katie. Um, it's absolutely miserable outside. It hasn't stopped raining for two days. It's so gray. It's really shit, but I like my outfit. I have on Camilla and Mark jeans, really good long length. Tabby boots, all refurbished and feeling great. A black t-shirt from Cos. Black knit, cashmere knit from J. Crew which is a v-neck, you can't quite see. Oh, you can there, there you go, there you can see. Um, and then I'm just gonna wear my big blue ray coat, I think. And I'm not sure what handbag yet. I will let you know what handbag I choose to take. Um, I'm probably gonna tie my hair up as well as I normally do. But I got my fringe trimmed yesterday. George Northwood has got a new salon in Shoreditch. It's so nice and I had a fringe trim, and I think we've done the perfect length ever. I love it so much. Still, day two of these. Still getting used to them, they hurt like a bitch. Fuck. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to go up for some dinner, even though it's miserable and not gonna, it's not really going out weather, but you know, we get on with it, we make the most. Good morning, guys. Oh. It's the first time I've used my voice today, if you can't tell. On my way into Central for a breakfast with Cutler and Gross, and then a meeting with Longchamp. Um, so a nice worky morning. It's raining outside, of course, but I'm wearing some impractical jeans for the rain. My acne stringy bits ones, I love these. Um, they're so good for when I just really want to wear jeans and a jumper, but make it look a bit nicer. Tabbies, Old Faithful, Arquette Men's, knit. God, this was so long. Throw a coat over it and then I got sent this amazing bag from St Agni. It's so good. My um, brown woven one, as you may all remember, is probably one of my most warm ones. And this is just like the perfect sized bag and the handles are a really good length so you don't get all bunched up under your armpits. I love this so much. 
Um, yeah, I'm just going to put coat on, take a brolly and hit the road for a productive day, I should think. Good morning, guys. It is breakfast time. Well, more like brunch time. Um, got my second Invisalign, 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 Invisalign train in. Uh, painful. That's what I'll say about that. That hurts. The second one hurts. But I think I'm slowly getting more used to it. Um, yeah, it's just surely going to become a normal thing because people do this all the time and they don't complain about it constantly like I am. Um, I am going to make my current favourite breakfast which is eggs, hard boiled eggs, some avocado, I don't think I've got tomatoes unfortunately, no I don't. Um, a bit of lemon, some sauerkraut, and some toast. So I'm just gonna boil some water to do that while I talk to you guys. I finished reading Ready Player One, I think it was earlier in the week, which I I really enjoyed. I really think like the world building that that he does is great. Um, like to say the whole idea. If you've not seen the film or read the book, the whole premise is that there's, we kind of live in this um, postmodern world that we will destroy through climate change. And there's just like huge amounts of poverty and the cost of living is completely unaffordable. It's all feeling of like very familiar, isn't it really? Um, and then there's this world that's created called the Oasis, which is this virtual world that most people actually end up living most of their lives within. So you put your headset on, you go into it, and you have an avatar. And within that, there's been this game that's created um, when the guy who created the Oasis died. He left his like trillion dollar wealth within the Oasis and he had to find three keys to find the Easter egg, which was um, his inheritance essentially, and also control over the Oasis, which is essentially like control over the modern world. Um, and there is a film of it as well, which I've seen a long, long, long time ago, but thankfully don't remember at all, for some reason. Um, and even as I was reading the book, I was like, have I seen this film? But I'm, I'm quite sure that I have. Anyway, it's great, but unfortunately, for me anyway, the main character was completely insufferable. He just couldn't bear the way that he was written. And it, there's like so many 80s references within the book that it gets a little bit tiresome to sort of drag through them. Um, so yeah, that sort of really let it down for me. And then when I, I watched the trailer afterwards of the film, thinking, have I made this up that I've seen this? Um, I still didn't recall it at all. And also it looked so different to how I visualized the Oasis, so that I don't actually want to go and watch the film because it's going to ruin it for me. Um, but anyway, I finished that and now I'm sort of reading Women Talking. It's in the other room, which has also been made into a film. And I think it just won an Oscar, maybe for best adaptation um, into a film. So we would be interested to watch that. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, but yeah, I've kind of been so-so with reading at the moment, not super on it. I've been working really busy with events, so I've just been out most evenings, actually. Um, and then I'm going to go up north this weekend for Mother's Day and see Mum and Weege, which I'm looking forward to. Um, I've got some new chairs in the background, which I'm going to show you. In a second, what's the name? Brecky, just like this water to boil. And um, I think that's everything. I feel like shit at the moment. I don't know about you guys. I feel so gross. I feel like my skin's not great. I have had this cold sore, having this on. Like I just feel really not my best at all. Which is fine, because it you know, we all go through these phases, don't we? But um, yeah, even like being on camera and doing this isn't my most favourite thing right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's make a healthy breakfast and start the days we need to go on. I've got a couple of meetings today, an event this evening, and then dinner and drinks with some friends. Um, so yeah, that's all good. There's lots of good things going on as well. I just feel gross. Look at this colourful, healthy breakfast. Tomato, feta, a lemon, avocado, sauerkraut, eggs, bread, drunk and coffee. And these are the chairs that I got the other day. 
lovely breakfast spot. Hello guys. So, got some what I hope is exciting news, but after much thought and deliberation, I am gonna bring back Testing Basics. It's been a few years since I did the last one, and the main reason I stopped doing them was because I felt like I'd really done all the main categories that I wanted to do that made up my own wardrobe and had a really firm sense of what I thought the best value for money was in each of those. So it became like, you know, really excessive to buy five of everything all the time to just for the sake of creating content. Um, but with so many years having passed now, I think it feels relevant to start going through some of them again. Um, and especially now because in my wardrobe I wear the same things more than ever. Um, like I've become more uniform like in how I dress more than ever. So that idea of a basic capsule wardrobe seems the most relevant it's ever been to my personal style as well. Um, so I'm going to start with baggy jeans. Obviously this is the vlog but I'm, I'm not sure when the video will be up because I'm still trying to order them all. But I bought these ones today. I won't say where they are just yet, where they're from just yet. Um, but <laughs> fucking big... <laughs> giveaway in the corner the bag there but anyway I am going out for a an event this evening um, with Tory Birch actually and this um they sent a shirt but fortunately it doesn't fit and then I remembered I had this really lovely cami from years ago from them so wearing that I've got a uh, knit from Reformation mango blazer these 80s there's no point pretending not to tell you and some Philippa K boots not too much of a heel because I think I'm gonna have to walk a little bit um but yeah, great outfit, great jeans. Let's see what happens. Um, I also think I may as well sign this vlog off here because I've been editing it all and it's already at quite a good length. Um, so thank you all so, so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.